These are Liverpool's liver beds, which many sailors would glimpse as they approach the city from all four corners of the earth. Today's episode, though, is about what happens when things go terribly wrong at sea or on the huge oceans that surround us. Returning to St James Cemetery, we will show you some of the graves of sailors, including those of the captain who was murdered by his chef and the forgotten maritime disaster. Join us as we tell these tombstone tales. The cemetery's left side is where we will find our first grave. After passing these magnificent structures on the left, we reach a burial honouring a maritime tragedy that has been lost to time. The capsize of the ship Ellen Vanin off the coast of Liverpool in 1890. Mary Allen and her 15-year-old son Ernest went on vacation to the Isle of Man, which was a popular holiday place in Victorian times. Between the British mainland to the Isle of Man, the 198-foot-long packet ship, the Ellen Vanen, transported people and mail. On December 3, 1909, the ship set off for Liverpool, carrying 15 passengers, 21 crew members and roughly 60 sheep. The weather was calm and clear when they sailed out of port, but six hours later, it had abruptly changed, with hurricane-force winds producing waves as high as 24 feet. A massive wave that slammed over the ship as it entered the River Mersey Channel caused it to sink and claim the lives of all 36 aboard. It wasn't until around 12 hours later that a ship had seen floating debris in the sea, including dead sheep and mail, destined for Liverpool. It would take five days for the first bodies to wash ashore. They were both laid to rest here, leaving a grief-stricken husband and three children behind. May they rest in peace. We leave Mary behind now and proceed to an American sailor's grave nearby. A brief visit to these majestic tombs which honour the Henriksen family who were murdered by their lodger in 1879. This will be discussed in a future episode. However, the burial of Captain Elijah Lindsay Halsey, who was murdered by the ship's cook, is also nearby. On August 3rd, 1844, Eliza, the captain of the Thomas Bennett, set sail from Liverpool for Charleston, USA. All was going well aboard the boat as it made its way down the coast of England and towards France. Five days into the journey, however, things changed. When the boat was just off the coast of France, a dispute arose between the captain and the cook, John Kent of Liverpool, in the course of which the captain produced a pistol and seemed intent on murdering John. First mate William Gibbons heard the disturbance on deck the afternoon of August 8th and ran up to find Captain Halsey lying on his back with a deep neck wound, dying shortly after. Gibbons and the other crew members overpowered Kent, who was then imprisoned. The ship then turned around and returned to Liverpool, where it arrived on the 14th of August. At the inquiry, crew members discussed how Captain Halsey frequently drank on board the boat and that he had a horrible temperament. They claimed that Captain Halsey had issues with most things on board the boat, particularly with the preparation and serving of food. At the trial, a jury acquitted the cook and ruled that the death was justifiable homicide, this being likely due to the tense historical relations between the US and the UK. Following the trial, the US demanded that John Kent be brought to justice there because the crime was committed against an American person while the US flag was flying. This was rejected by Britain. May he rest in peace. A quick turn around now, viewers, as we turn and make our way across the cemetery to the captain whose passing had been ascribed 
to a shipping mistake a month earlier. After consuming poison and refusing medical attention, Captain Henry Charles Webb of New York, USA, passed away on January the 25th, 1856 in Liverpool. A collision between Captain Webb's boat and another vessel had occurred a month earlier off the coast of Wales. According to his son, Captain Webb was under a significant lot of stress because he was required to pay damages that exceeded £5,000 as a result of his negligence. His crewmates had noted that the captain appeared depressed and had a depressed mood on the morning of his demise. Later on that day, he confessed to poisoning himself and warned the second in charge, take care of the ship and ensure that nothing goes out of it, for I am going to die. After a doctor was summoned and attended to Captain Webb, it was decided that coffee would wake him up. So coffee was ordered and brought to the doctor. However, Captain Webb declined to drink it and requested that everyone leave him to die. His crew kept an eye on him all through the night, but it wasn't until 6am when shouts of Father! Father! and My father is dead! could be heard from the captain's cabin. The horrifying discovery of his father's lifeless body had been made by Captain Webb's son, aged just 13 years old. Captain Webb left a wife, five sons and three daughters behind in his native America. May he rest in peace. We'll take a brief diversion to show you the catacombs that are situated on the east wall of the cemetery before visiting our final grave of the day, especially because we chose a beautiful day. After a brief stop at the slave trading Brown family, who have a renowned Liverpool street named in their honour, we reach the midpoint of the slopes that are home to the different catacombs. We can get a sense of the cemetery size by looking down over it. It's not difficult to think that it was once a busy cemetery, full of the graves of people whose lives had a significant impact on the world as we know it. The gravestones were moved from the cemetery's centre, piled up on one side and covered with a massive mound of soil by the local council because they thought it would be a wonderful idea. However, the bodies are still there. When you consider the enormous diversity of people interred here, it becomes obvious that the vandalism that took place in the 1960s and 70s should never have happened. The quantity of social and national history that has been lost is a scandal, and I don't believe many people are too concerned about. Right now, we we'll visit our last grave of the day. That of the grave of James Ramsey, who drowned in the River Mersey when he was just 23 years old. On April 26th, 1842, Merchant James Ramsey sailed across the Mersey. It was a beautiful sunny afternoon and the river was initially tranquil. However, as soon as they crossed the middle of the river, the waters got much rougher. The boat's side was hit by a large wave that split a plank and quickly filled the space. The five people on board turned the boat over as it started to sink, but because of too much weight on one side, she continued to roll like a barrel. Ramsey was washed away together with friends Alfred Littledale and Clement Royds. According to the local newspaper, it was one of the most tragic and terrible accidents that had happened in this city in the past. And those killed were associated with the most respectable circles in town. For several weeks, Ramsey's body lay undiscovered until a fisherman discovered his body floating in the River Mersey. May they rest in peace. We'll continue the ocean-going theme in next week's episode but this time we we'll relate the story of the world's most well-known maritime tragedy, Titanic. <laughs>